Greetings from sunny South Africa, sunny and chilly South Africa, it's the beginning of winter here. It's time for another episode of the English TV Live podcast. Today's guest is one of our teachers inside of our community. You can join by clicking here, by the way. Um, Terry. Terry is from Ireland. He is a polyglot, a linguist, language lover, and we had a really interesting conversation. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be really great listening practice. So, yeah, check it out. Hope you enjoy it. Hello, hello, Mr. Terry. Welcome back to the ETL podcast. This is your second time, I think, you've been on the podcast, right? The second time until now. Hopefully not the last. <laughs> right, until now. You, you did one with, with uh, Jacob a little while ago. Yeah, it was quite a while. Maybe a year, maybe 18 months. Yeah, it was a while ago. Do you remember what you guys talked about ago. on that episode? Uh, Jacob was asking me about language learning advice, about what's the best strategies, because I am a polyglot. I speak five languages, including English, and I'm hopefully starting new languages in Hindi and Russian, hopefully this year. Not sure when, but I will start both of them. Hindi and Russian. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll definitely leave the link for the previous episode that you were on, uh, whether you are listening on the website or you're watching on YouTube, I'll leave the, the link for that one in the description. But Mr. Terry, great to have you back here. And for those who have not seen you before, those who haven't seen you before, could you just give us a little introduction? You gave us a little bit of a teaser there, polyglot, polyglot life. Polyglot, it's, it's all about that life. Yeah, my name is Terry. I'm from a very small town in Ireland, in Donegal. It's called the name, Donegal Town. And when I sort of finished secondary school, high school, I didn't go to university. I just started working, cleaning in a hotel. I was one Irish guy with eight Brazilians. And that's how the job was really boring, but speaking with Brazilians was really fun. And that's sort of how I discovered my way with languages. And at the time with the Brazilians, I started helping them with English. They were helping me with Portuguese. So that's how I became a teacher and how I became interested in languages. And then later in life or later, I started learning more and more languages and traveling. And now I teach English because I love speaking languages. It's one of the most special things in the world. So I hope to bring that to other people with my English classes. All right. And for those who want to uh, check out Terry's classes, there's a few options. One is you can go to Terry's uh, YouTube or Facebook channel page uh english with terry and of course as you may know as you if you're a member if you may not know terry also does classes um a class every week in our private community at english tv live and could you just tell us a little bit about about the type of classes that you do in our in our community for those who don't know yeah well we are english tv live we're sort of an online learning community we're a little bit like an online school you know, we do classes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then there's challenges. But the best part is the friendship. You know, I really like teacher because you make a lot of new friends. That's the fun. That's the real fun part for me. But for me, it's I teach on Thursday, Teacher Terry Thursday, which is difficult to say quickly. Now, I well, usually be a, teach be a good grammar. Tongue, that'll be a good tongue twister, actually. Teacher Terry Thursday. We're recording this good on tongue twister. We're, we're recording this on Tuesday. And usually on Tuesday in our, in our WhatsApp group for our members, I give them a little tongue twister, tongue twister Tuesday. So maybe <laughs> tongue twister Tuesday, teacher T Terry Thursday. That would be, <laughs> that'll be quite. Yeah, you, you almost can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. If I, if I, yeah. So usually, usually I do grammar. I, I sort of, I am a teacher, but I think like a student, you know, I always try to make it super clear and super cl related to real life and really making it clear and open. Well, the last three weeks, I have been doing a special fluency series where I did a, one class about motivation and fluency, listening and speaking, all of my polyglot secrets. So check it out. <laughs> polyglot secrets. Uh, yeah, so Terry actually has a challenge for our members this week, which is um, to, uh, to help people practice their pronunciation. So finding some words that you want to practice and basically repeating them again and again, slowing down, repeating, repeating. And yeah. it seems as though this is something quite uh, fundamental in, in your kind of language learning strategy, right? The, the idea of repetition, repeating something 
until it just becomes kind of ingrained in your mind, right? Speaking alone to train your accent. Yeah, and this this week's challenge was to try to avoid pronounce some words you normally avoid. And I am taking my own advice. For years in Spanish, I avoided the word engineering. But the task this week is you take a word you avoid pronouncing, go on the internet, separate the syllables, and then slowly build up pronunciation. So I was always afraid of it. Now I did it last night. Ingenieraria. Ingenieraria. So, so what, so what, what, what was it? My act. Luckily, it's not, a, it's not a word that comes up too often. I would, you know, engineering. No. It's not. Uh, I mean, like in Korean, for example, I've always had trouble with the word water <laughs> because I, I have a bit of trouble with the L sound in Korean. So water is one that comes up all the time. And it's like, really, you know, I could like say a nice, try a nice beautiful out. sentence. And then when water comes up, it's like, sorry, what did you say? It's like, <laughs> so uh, engineering isn't too bad. But what was it about the word engineering that, uh, about that word that, that was tricky for you? Engenieria. Oh, and then oh. it was just like engen and then the E, this, I was not, what well, the problem was, I needed to slow, slow down. I was always trying to pronounce the word quickly and perfectly the first time. And then I need, last night, I slowed down, repeated, Engenieria. 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 And it's the idea that you will never pronounce a phrase or a word quickly or fluently until you slow down and really work the sounds. Engenieria. And I needed to stop and pronounce the word Engenieria. And this week I've been learning Dutch for fun. I find it very relaxing to learn Dutch. Is that a strange thing to say? <laughs> that, is a strange, but, <laughs> that is quite a strange uh, sentence to hear. All of the little phrases I've been learning, I operate on the idea that I will never feel confident to use them in public until I repeat them eight, ten times in at home, right? So in Dutch, for example, the, the way to say like, how are you or how is it going? Who had it? Or who had it with you? It's almost the and same. You almost can... the same as Afrikaans. Afrikaans is oh, really? a, a language here in South Africa, which is uh, originally from Dutch. So Dutch settlers who arrived here like 350 years ago, they created their own language called Afrikaans, which is kind of based on Dutch. In uh, Afrikaans, is uh, who had it? Is how are you? Who so, had it? Yeah, who yeah. had it? I think that's right. So, <laughs> um, so it's very similar. Yeah. That's fascinating. Can you speak Afrikaans? Not me, because my sister is fully bilingual in English and Afrikaans. Her husband is actually an Afrikaner. Uh, but uh, in my case, I, I arrived here like after I finished secondary school or high school. Ah, uh, OK, OK. But I didn't because it's, it's a language that people learn here in school. Not, you know, usually English, Afrikaans, maybe Zulu as well are the main ones that people learn. But obviously, I didn't have that opportunity um, at school. It's a bit of an excuse, but, uh, you know, I could have made an effort later. But uh, no, I don't. You can start now. I can start now. <laughs> Maybe I could learn from you. Learn from Because apparently D Dutch people and Afrikaners, they can have conversations with each other. It's just uh, might be a little bit a few misunderstandings. Yeah, usually en enough enough words in common. Yeah. Yeah. But this is who had it met yet. I like I sat on my couch just there, slowly processing. Who had it with yeah? Because I don't never expect to pronounce who had it with yeah, like with confidence or emotion before I repeat it slowly. And I have up been learning languages for years this way, and most people do it this way. Well, it makes sense. I mean, you've got to you've got to crawl before you can walk, right? You've got to take it a step at a time, literally um repetition is the mother of skill and all that so okay well good luck how did you decide to choose how did you decide on dutch how did that become the your dutch new language how did i decide on dutch well we have a really fun member in the group trudy and okay. she was she's from the netherlands and yeah. she can I, I had learned some words in dutch before and I was always kind of curious. I've been to the Netherlands two times. I was hoping to go back this year, but 
no, it's not happening. Not, not, not this year. <laughs> uh, just curiosity, just like the sound. I like Dutch people. I find them kind of, um, they've got a lot of spirit in life. You know, I quite like them. <laughs> well, if you are listening to this or watching this in the future and you're thinking, why, why, why is Terry saying you can't go to the Netherlands? That's because the whole world is currently under lockdown. If you're watching this uh, <laughs> in 2020, you know what we're talking about. But maybe somebody is watching or listening to this in the future and they're a, bit, a little bit confused about that. Maybe, yeah. Uh, if you can actually forget the big lockdown of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we I don't know. We, we forget things quite quickly. But I, yeah, this is definitely going to be something that it's not going to be easy to forget. Um, so Dutch. All right. So how many how many languages do you do you speak in uh, in total? Let's go through them. Well, the two languages I'm very fluent in is Spanish and Portuguese. Like my university training was in Spanish and I've spent years speaking Portuguese. Those are the two languages I can speak really well. After that, then well, the two languages that are strong but not super fluent are French and Italian. Like my French is still really good. The reading, the writing is not great, but the speaking and the reading is still really good. And then after that, when I have time, Romanian, uh, Dutch, Polish, Hungarian a little bit. It's too difficult to really like learn Hungarian. But then the other ones in Dutch and then, yeah, the Hindi and Russian later this year. I mean, realistically, Hindi, this Hindi, is my Hindi hobby. It will be a good one. Hindi this is my hobby and I love it. You know, I don't have the expectation to be completely fluent in Hindi, but I can learn to say something. I can learn to say hi to people in India yeah. or people in Russia, you know. <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, especially, yeah, once we can travel the world again and, you know, we can actually go and visit places, it will be so nice to to be able to, even at a at a low level, communicate with the local people. And I think they really appreciate that as well. I think if you go somewhere... Have you found this when you you travel somewhere, even if you just make an effort? Um, it's yeah, appreciated. Traveling with my languages has transformed my experience. I mean, when I was in Brazil, I was with my ex-girlfriend, but I it, talking to her family and her friends, old people, young people, and be able to speak and interact. And even in Italy, I lived in Portugal, I lived in Spain, completely changes your experience. Completely changes. Even if the people there can speak English, they appreciate you that you try, you know, and English native speakers can be just 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 a little bit like lazy with languages. They they feel it's a little bit optional. Just a little bit lazy. I think that's that's um, an understatement, <laughs> definitely. Um, Maybe. <laughs> so is that so? Where do you think you get this this motivation? Actually, we did get a question from one of our members. Um, it was uh, Gulna. She asked a question. I, I mentioned that I was going to be talking to you. Uh, Gulna is in Russian, mm -hmm. sorry, in Russia, <laughs> she's not in Russian, um, but she asked, um, when you're learning a language, how do you overcome that uh, frustration, those really difficult moments? Because obviously these happen, right? And a lot of people just give up. But in your case, you keep going, you, you keep pushing through. How do you, how do you do that? Help us. <laughs> um, I think it's first the understanding of well what's your expectations and what's realistic of what you're going to learn you know sometimes with languages language, we feel a little impatient we want fast results you know but then if we looked at other situations like if someone was training a sport or building a house or training swimming well then we understand that this process takes a little time the other thing, I, I, that was the first thing I would say, just be patient, just be realistic with your expectations and understand also that this frustration sometimes can be a really positive thing. The frustration, the anger is a lot of energy. And if you can feel that frustration, you can put it into your language learning with a little bit of patience. You know, I always use the idea that, you know, if you're going to eat a whole elephant, where do you start? take one bite the next day take another bite i was gonna say, and it's this, i was gonna say the trunk but yeah yeah well this philosophy of just super focusing on little parts consistency every day and accept a little bit that frustration is part of it and we all want to learn really really quickly and we all want to be super fluent so understand the frustration is a good thing be patient with yourself and be consistent that that for me is when you feel frustrated and you're like ah 
even if you just do 10, five, 10 minutes with the language, you're making every progress. day. You've advanced day, yes. 1%. Yeah. Every, I have contact with my languages every single day. Now, in a simple way, I just have lots of languages or pages in my Facebook and my Instagram that appear naturally. I have personalities that I'm interested in. For example, there's an Italian singer of a rock band, and she's always putting stories in Italian. I listen and watch a little bit and just maintaining contact in a very easy way. You know. Yeah, I think that's really important in, in everything, right? Consistency, consistency. Um, I think it's one, one of the good things about our community uh, is that we, our members have contacts with English every day, right? If they're watching your lesson, they're watching my lesson, maybe they're interacting in the WhatsApp group, they're joining on a, a Zoom call. They, they, they chat a lot in the WhatsApp group. I can see them talking a lot to each other because sometimes <laughs> I see the messages, I can see like there's 200 messages <laughs> and they're just chatting and talking to each other. And for Great. me, with my Spanish, my Portuguese, I'm very fluent in those languages because I made friendships in those languages. I know people who only speak to me in Portuguese or Spanish. And that's the wonderful thing I see in English TV Live where people, someone from Russia, the Netherlands, India, Italy, they're all interacting in a friendly, happy way. But, you know, it's not all worried about grammar. They're just communicating, yeah. making friendships now. That's the cool part for me. That's why I like to stay, like to teach in the community. Well, we're very, very happy to have you with us. And yeah, so so consistency, doing it, doing a little bit of something every day. I'm kind of curious about which, uh, like, do you have any specific resource when you were reviewing these different languages? You said videos, you, you like to watch videos, listen to, to interviews. Do you have any kind of materials like flashcards or books or, or anything like that that you review with? Um, generally, I don't use like a lot of flashcards with materials. I generally look for something in the language I'm interested in. It's something that I'm learning or it's about sport or something I really like. And if I, I would just kind of use Google just to Google stuff, but I, everyone needs to find their own way. Like flashcards didn't work for me. It doesn't mean it won't work for someone else. Probably work perfectly well. For me, I don't, I don't use so much educational materials. At this point, as a linguist, I already know what words I want to focus on, and I can use Google. But mostly, I will combine what I love, my hobbies, my passions, with the language. I mean, for example, with Russian and Hindi, one of the first things I will do is find one or two songs I kind of like, that I can sing a little bit and I like listening to. And then I'll find interviews with people I like or admire in these languages and I'll watch these interviews looking for just one, two, for example, if I watch the interview of three or four minutes, I only want to focus on 1%. I want to find one or two phrases I can use. So I use a lot of just authentic, real materials. You know, some people should always test what works best for them. You know, I'm not going to say flashcards are bad because they didn't work for me. For some people, they work really well. I don't have the patience to write them. <laughs> That's my problem. Well, actually, I found a really good uh, program recently, which uh, which uh, is uh, based around flashcards. It's called Anki, A N K I, yeah. <clears throat> and it's really good. It's um it's pretty simple. Well, it, it, like the interface is not fancy or anything, but you can um you can make your own flashcards. But also you can access databases of thousands of flashcards that different people have made um, about languages and, and other things as well. And you can just install it into your program and it will it's based around space um, space rep, space repetition. So you'll uh, you will review one flashcard today and you'll tell the program was it easy, was it hard, was it whatever? And then it will repeat that flashcard again maybe the next day. Or if it was really easy for you, maybe like a, a, a week later, and it's a really good way of uh, getting these these uh, this vocabulary, these expressions into your mind in the uh, in your long term memory. Uh, for me, I really it's, like that. I really it's like an amazing. That. Yeah, it's an amazing tool because I look now and I say, all people learning English, you guys are lucky. When I started learning, I had to 
pay for everything and to buy all the books. YouTube did not exist. And the idea that you can have a flashcard system on your phone is, is amazing. Again, personally, I never had the patience. And when I write like vocabulary lists, I have a tendency to write in a complete phrase. Yeah. I have just a notebook, which is a phrase journal, a phrase diary. But um, I know some of my Brazilian students use it because I have some courses for beginner Brazilians. And they told me, yeah, we put your phrases into the Anki. And uh, it looks very cool. You know, I would love to see how people use it and how maybe I could use it more myself. Yeah, I think it's 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 um it it seems I just found it a few weeks ago. I know it's been around for a long time, but it it, it yeah it integrates with your phone and your computer, and it's, it's it's pretty nice. I also really like Memrise as well. Um, I know some people like Duolingo and some other ones, but again, it's it's up to each person to find something that works for them, right? That's comfortable for them. Like in your case, you said you don't really like to learn individual vocabulary. That makes sense, though. I think. Because I've had this problem as well. You learn vocabulary, but you're not putting it into context. So you learn a word, you know the word perfectly, right? Maybe the word for, I don't know, whatever, like engineer. <laughs> but you don't, know how to, <laughs> how, you don't know how to put it into a sentence. You need to have it in a sentence and then make another sentence, another sentence, right? With that same word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I always try to focus on writing a sentence that I think I will use or need. Mm. Like Duolingo is fabulous technology, fabulous technology. But some of the examples for phrases mm -hmm. are things you would never really <laughs> say. Yeah. A friend of mine was learning Portuguese. He was in Brazil. And one of the sentence was like, the B writes a letter. Like B, <laughs> like me, the B writes a letter. And I was thinking, this is fabulous technology. Please write better yeah. examples. <laughs> yeah. Or like, the cat is sitting on a mat. It's great, but how often are you going to say that in a <laughs> in a everyday conversation? Yeah, I can say that in Dutch. Oh, the cat sat on the mat. Oh, but good. <laughs> when can I say that? Where's Trudy? <laughs> well, I don't know if Trudy has a cat, but uh, if she does, <laughs> hello to Trudy if you're if you're listening and watching. By the way, um, so I'm curious uh, uh, when it comes to learning these languages. So, what what is the what is like the the it's kind of connected to my previous question, but when you you find things difficult, you're getting frustrated. What is it that you're you're thinking of as the end goal that keeps you moving forward? Like, what what is the motivation that that keeps you going there? Um, the motivation for me was always to be able to travel more feeling more integrated and more having more options and, and speaking to people. I mean, I started learning languages when I was nine for the first time when I had a book in Portugal on, on, on holidays. And I just got excited just speaking to people. So for me, the excitement is always, I'm, I'm going to use this with a real person, you know, and it's not like this theory, but even like last week I was using my phrases in Dutch with Trudy. <laughs> she was very surprised. But that's that's the big end goal for me. It's not really about money. It's not really about my career. It's more about the fun, positive reaction. And that's why inside, like when I was nine, I found this little tourist guidebook. We were on holiday in Portugal and I started using the phrases in cafes and restaurants and all people were smiling and happy. And in lots of ways, I'm still that nine year old boy that just wants to talk to people. <laughs> right. So, OK, so, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it all comes down to connections and that that feeling of kind of that that rush of excitement of when when you get that acknowledgement that somebody can understand you in another language, right? Yeah. And that's very different motivations with a, an English native speaker compared to someone learning English and someone might have more definite m reasons. You know, I need this for my work or for my job, you know, and to those people, I would say just have a nice bright positive vision of what you want but maybe don't focus so much on your career and money but also think about those things about new friendships traveling and positive experiences and it's important to think about that think about the good things coming and the positive visions and positive visualizations because sometimes it's a lot of work you know I'm not going to lie to anyone. I'm not going to say, yes, you can be fluent in three to six months. It's like This takes time. It's really worth it. It is going to be great. But <clears throat> there are moments when, 
for example, I'm a big fan of repetition. And one of the things I do, like when I start Russian and Hindi, is I will take a small audio dialogue conversation and I will repeat that listening maybe 30, maybe 40 times. And sometimes that doesn't always feel so much fun. But later, when you have it, oh, it's the feeling. Like, oh, like the satisfaction, ah, you did it. You achieved it. There was this barrier, this language, your potential, and you achieved your potential. And that feeling, focus on that feeling. There really is something about repetition, though. Um, like, there's certain there's certain expressions in, like, in Korean or even Italian. I, I used to love Italian when I was at school, but it was a long time ago. Um, but there's a few sentences that I just will never forget because I just repeated it so much. Like, in Italian... Um, Ho studiato italiano in Inglaterra, right? Like I studied Italian in England. So it's like, that's like pretty much all I remember from Italian, even though I was pretty good at Italian at that time. But it's, it's a long time ago. I've kind of lost it because you got to keep it up, right? You got to keep practicing. But that sentence, is, it, yeah. that sentence is just one over the years that I just kept saying. And so it just stays on there. Um, yeah. And similarly with Korean, even though my Korean is obviously I'm not practicing every day. There's, there's certain phrases which I used to use all the time which will just be there forever. They're never going to go. Mm. Um, I, I say to students, if you just think about that, if you just learn one good phrase, one good expression, one favorite line from a song, one favorite line from a TV series, just one a day, just one a day, you learn it and practice it four or five times, eight times speaking. Okay. Imagine that after 30 days, you have 30 new phrases. Yeah. Just one a day. Yeah. Yeah, just one a day, just one a day, just that consistency, just a little bit of time, five minutes. Cause it's better, to, it's better to spend like five minutes a day than one hour every two weeks or something, right? Yeah, I mean, my biggest piece of advice is combine your hobbies and interests with English. So it doesn't feel hard. It doesn't feel like work, you know? I mean, in my case, I love watching documentaries about military documentaries. I was watching one about the French Foreign Legion training in the jungle. And this is just fun for me to watch this, you know, as I sit at home comfortably watching soldiers train in the jungle. <laughs> but my point is, lying in you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not even studying French. I'm just enjoying and just getting distracted in something I like. And then it was a piece of advice this teacher gave me years ago in the classroom make your students laugh and they forget they are learning and i say if you start having so much fun watching the things you like in english you will just forget your learning you know it's like if you meet people who are really really like video games and they have been playing video games for years and years and years and a lot of these video games don't translate voices don't translate all the words and they're some of the best english speakers you will meet because they were just relaxing yeah and learning and not thinking you know and a lot of people have learned uh learned english through fa their favorite tv shows like friends as a as a common one so many people say i learned english from watching friends or maybe like big bang theory or these other shows they're just enjoying it and yeah learning some and it, like english friends theory. and big bang theory are so relaxing yeah even just for me you don't need to like, it's not like a very complicated, it's not that hard. You can just like enjoy it and relax. And that's, that's the best thing because you meet some students who are super students and they're always studying grammar and always focusing on dictionaries. This is like eating broccoli all day. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to eat broccoli all day? No, or I want ice cream. Do you want like <laughs> ice cream or, or a burger or chocolate or something really tasty that doesn't feel like study, 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 broccoli. Because you see people, I did it, where you buy, you spend money on a grammar book because you want to take it seriously. I still have those two Portuguese grammar books from 15 years ago. I never read them. <laughs> Too boring. I think also when you, uh, like if you buy a grammar book or a course or something like that, that, that action of buying it almost feels like an action by itself. It almost feels like you're achieving something by buying the, the grammar book, right? Yeah, I mean, I spent 35 euros on the Portuguese grammar books and walking out of the shop, I felt great. Right. But two months later, when I saw them on my desk, gathering I dust, not touched them. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, it's almost like the gym. When yes, 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 exactly. 
when you know you should, but you don't really want to. And then, like, for me, I don't really like exercising that much, so I bought a big punch bag. It's more fun. It's easier. It's actually letting out, just, letting out that that uh, it's right there <laughs> frustration. Goodness me. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I totally know what you mean. Like uh, in my case, I love playing tennis. I don't, I, I don't enjoy going to the gym, but I love playing tennis. So I had a gym membership before, and I just wasn't going very much. It was pretty expensive. Like you know, throwing money down the drain. It's a good expression. Um, and um, then I was like. Hey, I love tennis. I haven't played tennis for ages. Let me try and get back into it. And I joined a local club. And until this lockdown started, uh, I was yeah. playing. I was playing, you know, several times a week, making friends at the same time, enjoying it, and getting exercise. So, it's it really is a great a great approach, definitely. Yeah, I mean, students are, are always a, sometimes a little nervous asking teacher what do you think is this a good book or is this a good thing or is that there because we always get a little confused thinking oh this has good english vocabulary and i will always ask do you like it are you interested do you really want to read that book or, or would you prefer to do something else you know <laughs> right yeah. my advice is you know you can have a balance if you you can do a little grammar you can do just five minutes grammar and spend 20 minutes watching something you love, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the fundamentals are important. We need to, we can't, can't ignore them, but... Uh... Yeah, I do a weekly class of uh, grammar every week. It's just, you know, grammar is a little bit broccoli and we can't eat broccoli every day, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, I like that. I like that. Some uh, people I like eat, that metaphor. Some people eat broccoli every day. I don't. <laughs> well, if, and if you enjoy broccoli, then do it, right? Like some people, like you, you love grammar, right? You love grammar and you're okay. So you, you get obsessed with the grammar points and the different things. And like for you, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, well, yeah, I love that part. I love explaining it. Or it's, it's my idea that a perfect explanation always exists. I just, just need to find it. Like a perfect explanation to make, make it really clear and easy exists. I just need to find it. That's my mission in life. <laughs> And you're definitely definitely doing a good job. Just getting getting a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit dark here. Um, so I'm curious then. Um, so you've got all these languages. You you love learning languages, but obviously you need to pay the bills as well. <laughs> you need to keep the lights on. Um, you need to keep the internet running. So how did you? You, you obviously have, you've always had this passion for languages since a young age, which has progressed over the years. But how have you combined that with making a living? Well, making a living has been a lot of me just speaking in English, like with my courses and this stuff. But at the same time, um, don't just focus on fluency, don't just focus on grammar, but I have a third speciality, which is teaching beginner Brazilians. So I have several online video courses dedicated to Brazilians where I speak, speak a lot of my Portuguese and in maybe next year, I would like to open a course for Spanish speakers if I have the time or have the resources. But generally in my professional career, it's, it has been the most useful just thinking like a student. When I'm writing a grammar explanation, it's like this has to be so clear and so detailed because if not, it's, it's not clear. I think that's the way it has helped me the most. It's just making me a better teacher because I was a student for so long. I was in a language school, private classes, university language classes. I've had good teachers, bad teachers, amazing teachers, terrible teachers. I've had all the experience of a student. You know, I think that's how it helps me the most. So you're kind of like teaching yourself in the way that you would like to have been taught when you were younger. I always, when I write a grammar class, I think, first of all, if Terry was learning English, what would he say? Would he say, this is useful, I like it, or like, this isn't clear? Oh, okay. I always ask, are you, like, are you in, in my the, head, I are you ask, talking like, to the younger student you? Terry, younger Terry, yeah. If you were Terry 10 years ago, learning English the first time, <laughs> what would Terry think? And if Terry thinks it's okay, then I publish. If it's not, then I do it again. <laughs> I like that. That's a pretty. Does that make pretty, sense? Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. It's actually a good. It's quite a good strategy, I think. Yeah. So, because 
at the time when I was like 22, 23, 24, I was kind of obsessed with learning. Like I was training, listening all the time. I wanted to become a polyglot or what they call a polyglot is basically what I am. I can speak my languages. I don't read and write them so well, but I can speak four languages and including English five. But uh, I did not become a hyper polyglot. I did not add like seven, eight, ten, eleven languages. Well, or, well not, 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 yet. not yet, not yet. I mean, <laughs> still have a long, many years to. Uh, yeah. To to work. would you like to do that? Would you like to become a like super hyper multi duper? I don't know what the name is. Polyglot. A hyper polyglot? No, I I don't think so. No, I mean, I think I would prefer to focus on the. I think seven languages is a good number. I would prefer to focus on like five, six or seven and have a really good level as opposed to having like 12, 15 languages and then just all having a low level. I mean, with my Romanian, my Polish, my German, it's all very low level. It would be much nicer to go back, and spend six months in Romania or the Netherlands and bring that level up than add new languages. How did you... At the same time, I... I can't resist. Like I have to. I'm curious about Hindi and Russian. So, I can't well, Hindi, Hindi's a Hindi and Russian are both great ones because obviously, uh, I mean, Hindi, India is such a massive, massive, massive country, and then Russian. Several countries speak Russian, so you could probably get around Eastern Europe pretty easily if you could speak if you could speak Russian. You know, Ukraine, Do Belarus. Russian. Um, all of the kind of former Soviet countries, like they all, you can probably get around. You've traveled in those countries as well, have you? You've been to uh, Ukraine, you've been to Belarus. Uh, I've been a little bit. Yeah, l last year was my first first uh, time to visit Eastern Europe, which was really nice because I'd only been in Western Europe before, so it was really it was really good to see kind of the other the other uh, part of Europe, Eastern Europe. I was very curious about it, and yeah, it's very different. It's very different, and. Um, if for lockdown, I was really hoping to travel more in Hungary, uh, Romania, Prague, all Eastern Europe. I was really, really hoping, but it's better just to take our time and just wait now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was in Hungary as well last year and um, and in Czech Republic and Prague. And yeah, beautiful, beautiful places. But uh, it's, it's, it's kind of weird because I was pretty lucky in my case because I had quite a good, like last year, I traveled around Europe quite a lot. And in general, I actually went to Egypt as well, um, uh, I, in England, and I, I had quite a lot of travel and good times. And um, so it was basically just before all of this happened. So I, I will definitely, I think all of us will appreciate it more when we get back to normal, when, when we get back to normal life and we have the ability to travel. I think it's just one of those things we just took for granted. Like, yeah, I can travel across the world. I can do that. I can... All these things. Yeah, we we took getting haircuts for <laughs> granted. Forget about travel. I just want a real haircut. <laughs> oh, yeah, join the club. Join the club. Um, I always used to think haircuts were really really boring. Now I can't wait. <laughs> so say I, I on my alarm on my schedule I had you know a fixed day for a haircut every month and you know every three weeks it, my alarm would go off time for a haircut. That's happened several times now. <laughs> I'm just I keep missing these. <laughs> haircut dates and um even here um in south africa we have a really really strict lockdown it's going to be eased a little bit more next month we can't even go for a walk except for very very yeah. early in the morning so just things like that just like i just want to go for a walk i just want to you know i, I know you and i both enjoy a, a cold a cold pint or yeah to go to the pub here it's a much easier lockdown i mean well we're not permitted more than three kilometers from a residence but with social distancing we're allowed to go outside or it's just you know can't go to pubs or nightclubs or anything like that yeah but even the things like i mean yeah it does sound a bit better over there but still just going to just go into the pub just go into your ca just go into a cafe just going window shopping you know <laughs> whatever like going to the cinema just things we just did and just took for granted um even visiting my friend's house, where yeah. a friend of mine has really bad as asthma, so she's cocooning, oh, meaning oh, that she's yeah, staying yeah. in her house. Oh dear! I mean, she's there with her husband. I just can't go in and sit down and watch TV with them, you know. Yeah, and and this whole with the whole social distancing thing, like the staying 
like two meters away from each other, whatever. I don't know. It's so awkward. I would rather just not see someone. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd rather just not see someone than when you see them. It's like, hey, how, how's it going? How you doing there? You know what I mean? Like, it's just it's yeah, like <laughs> such a weird, that's, such a weird, horrible. That's far enough. <laughs> like, yeah, you stay over there. And I don't know if you've noticed, like, when you watch TV shows and movies. And you see everybody close together and shaking hands and high fiving and stuff. It kind of looks weird now because we've so quickly everything's changed so much. Yeah, there have been some movies and some books that talked about the possibility of this kind of pandemic, and, and uh, it's kind of scary. But I hope everyone's okay. Hope we all yeah. just get through this and the world opens up again someday <laughs> but would, keep learning english <laughs> yeah keep going keep going it will end eventually and hopefully by the time you're listening to this or watching this um things have got uh, you know kind of back to normal um so what some people might not know is that you are quite the um quite the master of making courses online courses um well maybe i'm sure many people do know if they've taken your courses but but uh yeah you, you you make these courses would you like to talk about that a little bit maybe tell us about that yeah they're they're short uh video courses that i have on a website called udemy.com short uh good simple courses very low kind of uh accessible price i talk about speaking about wanna gonna have to all of the native speaker secrets i have a business english course job interview grammar and maybe a new course next month called awesome adverbs but we'll we'll see how much time called, i have called but yeah they're called what easy what verbs? self-study courses awesome adverbs awesome so adverbs okay. all of the yeah yeah <laughs> based on classes that i did inside english tv live those were i think eight weeks i did adverbs in english tv live and then Everybody was an expert at the end. Oh yes, yes. Is your is your your greatest hits? So, how long does it take to, to to put a course together when you when you make a a course? From the moment you have the idea until the end, I think it's going to be minimum three to four months. It's a lot like writing a book, like writing a novel. From the absolute like the courses for Brazilians, they took much much longer. They like one of them. Two of them took me a year, like just writing the course mostly because I was writing it in a very detailed way. But um, yeah, it takes a long time. I mean, producing content is is hard. You ask people who work on YouTube and stuff, but the magic is it's hard work. But when it's finished, it's finished forever. And, you know, students can use my lessons at home or when they want, you know, flexibility. And these courses have been pretty popular, right? Pretty successful. You've got how many, uh, you mentioned before, but it's a lot. How many students do you have who have enrolled? 70,000 your... students total. But though, I have some free courses as well, but 70,000, seven zero. That's pretty that's zero, zero, zero. Doesn't that blow your mind to think that 70,000 it... people have, you know, enrolled in your course? I mean, I don't know how many of those have finished, but many thousands of people. Yeah, I mean, it's not... It's not that much money. Some of the courses are quite cheap and they're quite easy to buy. So it's not like millions and millions of, of euros or dollars. The, the cool thing about impact is when you see how many countries are learning English. Like in 164 countries of the world, somebody has bought my course. And that's incredible. I mean, I remember one time I was able to connect and talk to a guy in the Dominican Republic, the small island in the Caribbean. And he bought my course and we were able to chat and on Skype for 30 minutes. That's the cool thing. You know, I'm in a small town here in Ireland, but I can still connect. You can still connect with a lot of other people in the world. When I am in this small town in Ireland, I can still connect with the world, you know. That's amazing. You know, and that's, that's the really cool part. It's still like even little. I, the bit... only bad thing is I, 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 I wish I could meet them all personally. I wish I could like shake their hands say welcome <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, we haven't even met in real life yet you and i we haven't even met in real life no not yet no that's crazy i had big plans i had big plans for us to meet in england <laughs> this year yeah and we were going to do a lot of 
preposition yeah, videos. You've got, you've got the stream. You've got in, the stream about this this on in at video, right? The preposition video on in at, <laughs> and we're gonna be, I don't know, jumping on buses. I think it'd be great if we could go around London and we get on bus, get on the train, we get on an airplane, we could get. On a boat, maybe we could go on the London Eye. Well, I was learning Dutch this week with a really cool YouTube channel, and one of the videos was just learn Dutch in the street, where they just ask people in the street, people in public, basic questions in Dutch. I would love for us in England to go and ask people in the street basic <laughs> questions like what that makes you some, happy that some, to be that British, takes some courage, right? Actually, what's the best call, food? You can call that, I guess, kind of vox pops. I think is the name, unless I'm mistaken. So you stop people on the street. Yeah, there's a lot of popular YouTube channels that do that. I always think when you like, it's, it's kind of uh, I don't know, like you need a bit of a uh, bit of courage. Have you ever tried that before? Like stopping people on the street to ask them questions? Yeah, I have done it. Yeah, I did it with my students where we were studying the rock band U2. This is in Dublin, and my students were from Brazil, and we were studying U2 and Bono, the famous singer. And now, if you know or you don't know, Irish people love and hate Bono. They have a, you can say they have a, a love-hate right. relationship with Bono. Yeah, well, some people love him and some people hate him. Yeah. It's not love-hate. It's you love him or you hate oh, okay. him. <laughs> like, okay, like Marmite. You either love it or hate it. Yeah, re recently, recently he donated $14 million to... Uh, nurses and hospitals here in Ireland. So oh. currently I love him. Oh wow. But I took the students out out onto the street with a simple question. What do you think about Bono? To see the responses. <laughs> and it was hilarious. It was so good. So mixed, so, right, I guess. Yeah, some of the words I can't repeat here <laughs> in an educational place. Like people were saying he's this, he's that, he does this. And some of the words I can't repeat. And then some people were really happy about it, but um, well, maybe maybe you could you could, and then I could I could beep it out. <laughs> yeah, I think if we ask people in England, maybe they will. I don't know if we ask them, yeah. But um, yeah, it is it, it, yes, you feel nervous, but the hard part is starting. The hard yeah. part is like, excuse me. <laughs> I remember, yeah, I remember about yeah, a lot, maybe. 12, 13, maybe 14 years ago, I was doing a little internship at a radio station and uh, they sent me out to do this, uh, one of these Vox Pops, like asking people their opinions. I can't remember what it was. I'm trying to see if I can remember. Maybe it was something about Harry Potter, unless I'm mistaken. And I had to go and ask people. And yeah, I think it's like that, right? At the beginning, you're quite and nervous and then you kind of, then you get, then you get, then you get into it. You get into the swing of it. You get into the flow. And uh, were you recording them? Asking yes. Them for the yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. I, I was. Yeah, I had. I, I remember I had some type of professional equipment that I had to take care of. It was like this fancy microphone and this recorder thing. And I remember. Car I remember it was quite heavy. I was carrying it around and <laughs> asking people questions. And actually, I remember as well. I did it on a march as well. Yeah. Now it's coming back to me. All of these memories, which were <laughs> which were uh, kept far... a protest march. Yeah, some some type of protest march in South Africa. I think it was um, it was like trade unions or something. Like they were really like it was a big march, and I was walking down the march and I was interviewing people in the march. Like, what do you want to talk about? I've got a picture of it somewhere where I'm like I'm like standing in the middle of these. I'm standing in the middle of all these yeah, people. Yeah, we should do that. I'm, <laughs> I was like standing in the middle of all these people who were trying to, you know, get their voices across and stuff. And yeah, it's quite an, it's quite intense. But people do like in that kind of situation, people want to talk, so it's not as difficult. Uh, where, but if you're just walking down the street in like a high street or something, a lot of people don't want to be bothered. Um, in my experience, when you started to talk to them, if you explain very quickly, I don't want your money. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want your credit card details. I don't want you to buy anything. I just want five minutes of your time. People are very, I don't, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I don't want to give you any money and explain. I don't want your money. Just please five yeah. minutes of your time. That's all I want. <laughs> and then usually people are like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. in in England and I'm sure in Ireland as well, a big problem or something that's really annoying is you're walking down the, 
the high street and you just see so many people with clipboards right like the clipboard army and it's like just getting from one end of the high street to the other can be a mission if you have all these different people with clipboards have you do you have the same thing in ireland yeah we, we do we have it a lot and i personally don't really like those big organizations i have read too many scandals about staff in the organizations taking money and using it the way they should not so I, I don't give any money to them I give parity to other people like uh, the Navajo Nation <laughs> in the United States I donated money to them I donated money the, to Irish nurses the Navajo Nation is that a, what, a Na Native American it's a Native American yeah because 106 80 years ago they donated uh, food and money to us in the okay. Ireland, and when we had a hunger, we had a famine problem, we had a food potato, problem, and they donated potato famine, right? that. Uh, it was during the potato famine, exactly. And the Navajo Choctaw tribe donated like five thousand dollars to us. Wow! And then recently, we have Ireland has donated more than two million dollars in the past two weeks wow. to the Navajo Nation. So so touching, so sweet. I know you mentioned, isn't it? I I can't watch the video without crying, like a uh, little girl or something. And I and like five thousand dollars, one hundred and fifty years ago would have been would have been way more. No, well, it was one hundred and seventy dollars, which today would be equivalent would okay. be five thousand dollars. But for them, for them, that would have been a lot of like a lot of money. It was a That's huge amount of money. Yeah. And apparently there's uh, a lot of people. I met an American guy, Ryan, and he said his great grandmother is, or his grandmother is half Choctaw Indian, half Irish. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. It's one of the other amazing things about um, sort of bringing cultures together. And yeah, the other donation I made recently was I donated like money to Emma with pronunciation with Emma. She's <laughs> trying to buy a new computer. Oh, you really? know, like you buy her a, a coffee. I bought her like five coffees. Oh like, yeah, twenty right. euros. I remember she, she was doing that. Like computer. some the website's like Co it's Kofi or something like that. The name of the website. Yeah, Kofi, yeah. Kofi. So you. I, I pronounce it coffee, but okay, um, that, pro that probably is the pronunciation. Yeah, uh, she works so hard on YouTube and she's always publishing. And I look at her, I feel so lazy. I thought, oh, I'll just contribute a little bit. <laughs> how much did you? How much did you give Miss Emma? I think it was twenty-five dollars. Oh wow, pretty pretty okay. generous, pretty nice. Um, Terry, I need, uh, I need. I, what do I need? I need a. Uh, I need a new. Computer, <laughs> I need something. Help me, Terry. Fingers crossed, Lloyd. Oh, thank Work you. Hard. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, anyway, uh, Terry, I think we'll probably wrap it up here, but um, we can. We should definitely do this again sometime if you're keen. It's always good to chat. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. What, what's the what's the? Do you have any any study study plans for today? Since we were talking study about plans. your study, your learning plans. No, I have mostly work plans today. Okay. I, my, I don't know if I'm gonna have time. I have so much to do. I have YouTube videos to finish today, so probably just watch something in French later. Relaxing. That's it. Oh, we actually had one one more question that I that one of our members asked. Uh, speaking of Trudy, one of our members from the Netherlands, I call her Troublemaker Trudy. Hashtag Troublemaker Trudy. She was asking about. Um, what was she asking? She was asking about your love of dogs. Yeah, who doesn't love dogs? Yeah, it's my dream to have like six or eight dogs. <laughs> sure. It's my dream to get the male and the female, let them have the babies, the litter of puppies, and then keep all of them. But uh, it might be an impossible dream. Who knows? <laughs> How many dogs do you want, <laughs> ideally? Eight. Nine. Ten. I'm, okay, I should probably yeah. stop you. It's gonna. <laughs> have you always? Uh, have you always loved dogs? Like since a young age. I've always had dogs. Oh. Even when I was growing up, I like my grandmother had a dog, and I was playing as a baby. So my first stint there. But they're just so friendly. Like that's why I like them. I wish I was a dog. 
<laughs> so I can just start talking to random people and like, oh, oh hi, hello, da, da, da. like, and then people are gonna people are gonna stroke you, and be like, oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's surprisingly relaxing when people randomly just start stroking you. Like, I know why dogs like this now. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it would be kind of creepy. <laughs> Some people just come up to you and stuff. But that that's why I work so hard to get a, a house with a garden and enough space for dogs. <laughs> that's the dream. Okay, well, Trudy, thank you for your question and. Uh, I'm sure we'll we'll talk more about dogs in the future. Um, favorite dog? What is your favorite dog, by the way? I can't. Don't ask me that. I don't have a favorite dog. They're all they're all amazing. It's like asking I, I can't. who your favorite who your favorite child is or something. Yeah, that's like asking our English TV live members who's your favorite teacher. Yeah, you know, don't don't <laughs> ask questions like that. Lloyd, Lloyd, of course. Um, <laughs> of course, yeah. you're the leader. <laughs> no. Um, that is a dangerous question. But uh, Terry, thank you so much for your time. And uh, to everybody out there who is listening to this podcast or uh, or watching, thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this little conversation. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below. Maybe there's some expressions that you came across in our conversation here and you want to practice using them. So please go ahead. Or maybe if you want to answer, uh, give your opinions about any of the things we were talking about, please do in the comments. But until next time, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to you, Mr. Terry. And uh, yeah. any last words? And uh, if you guys want to join our community, want to come watch our classes, we run classes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with Zoom calls. It's EnglishTVLive.com. You can start a two-week free, uh, two free trial and you can come and test and see. I think it's a great place. I like, really recommend it to learn English. And that's not just because I teach there, but... Well, uh, uh, Terry's been, how long have you been in English? About, about, since about two years ago, right? Um, yeah, I, I had to take a Took break. Took a bit of a I break. To Portugal, and then I came back, and here I am. Yeah. yeah it's been a while. Mostly two years. We say on and off. On and off, years. yeah. On and off. Uh, but yeah, t so Terry does his, his, his lesson is every uh, Thursday. He does a live lesson in our private Facebook group. He also does... After the live lesson on on Facebook, he does a, a class on Zoom, which I join as well mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, give a little bit of backup and maybe give my two cents on things. So definitely check it out. EnglishTVLive.com. We would love to see you in our community. But until next time, everybody, stay safe, stay happy. And Terry and I will talk to you again very soon. You're breaking up <laughs> at the perfect time. <laughs> Break, okay. All right. So until next time, yeah. everybody. You want last words, Terry? All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks Ciao. for watching, guys, or listening. <laughs>